Okay. All right, thank you again. Um, so by now you should be completely inspired to do a trial after listening to all those fantastic talks this morning. Um, so um, yeah, with the eminent certain trialists like Prof Beard and Prof Blaisby, like just sharing their experiences um, with us today is just, you know, giving us fantastic insights on how to do the trials. And then Tom, Donna and Stephanie showing, you know, that it can be done at home here. And then some inspiration there from Declan is great too. And how to embed SWATs in our trials. Uh, so really, uh, I'm kind of, my kind of overview or the aim of my talk today really is to kind of take, push the message of, you know, why to do a trial um, and kind of in the more specifics, the kind of granularity of how to start and manage a trial and how we as the new Surgical Research Support Centre are going to provide um, you with the supports to get your trials off the ground. Uh, I'm going to just outline kind of our future vision for both surgical research and trials in Ireland. And at the end, I will set you a little challenge. So as I said, you know, by now you should be inspired to do a trial, but uh, just wanted to kind of um, put some more suggestions as to, you know, why should you start or undertake one? But really the patient is kind of, you know, the, the beginning um, and kind of the main uh, reason why you would start a trial. The best healthcare outcomes come from uh, evidence-based research uh, and random, randomized controlled trials are really the gold standard of, you know, showing whether an intervention is uh, worthwhile pursuing or not. But like, imagine if your idea or your trial changed practice and like more patients lived because of the trial that you did or had less complications or even perhaps that surgical operations took half the time so you could get home in time for dinner. So those are all kind of valid reasons for, for starting to do a trial. As we've heard from Tom and Donna, I mean, they are very beneficial for your career. Uh, you're likely to get higher impact factor publications. Um, you are going to kind of network with a lot more people. You're likely to get invited to more meetings, kind of get abstracts accepted and uh, be invited as speakers. And it would give you an edge when you're going for your consultancy post. Perhaps you are slightly more ambitious and you wanna go for a Nobel Prize, that's fine too. Uh, or perhaps you, you know, want to uh, invent something, uh, sell it to a med tech company and retire early. Or perhaps you're just curious, maybe, you know, there's an inventor in you there that wants to kind of, you know, ask the questions. Well, how do you start? So, as Stuart said, I came from Cancer Trials Ireland, which is one of the biggest clinical trial networks. Um, but my uh, background before that, I came from academia. So I was a basic scientist um, doing clinical research, but never went near a clinical trial. So coming to Cancer Trials Ireland, it was, you know, as a trial coordinator and then subsequently as a project manager, I really kind of got a huge grounding in how to run a trial. But it also kind of know, means that I know where you're coming from in terms of not having a clue just how to start it. Um, so I can understand and kind of um, guide you as to, you know, the things that you need to know and the things you need to think about if you're, if you're running a trial in terms of practicalities. So firstly, you need to identify the need and you need to gather um, evidence, systematic evidence to prove that there is a need. You can't just say, oh, I think there's a need there. I've seen one or two literature's um, reviews saying this. You really need to um, get systematic evidence. So if you can't find a systematic review that's been published, do one yourself. The other thing you need to do is check, has it been done already? Um, as definitely been pointed out there, you know, there's a lot of trials that have been undertaken that haven't been published yet. So you don't want to kind of start off doing a trial uh, only to find that, you know, there's a trial out there that only needs to recruit another two or three patients and then they're going to publish their study report. Uh, so check on clinicaltrials.gov, has it been done before? Perhaps, you know, maybe it's been done and it's been terminated early. You might want to kind of look into that and reframe or redesign your, your research question. And also, you know, check with your colleagues, um, you know, see, is it a good idea? Do they think, would they get on board? You know, do they think it's feasible? Um, and, you know, as 
Donna was uh, pointing out, you know, talking to colleagues in other centres to see if they would get on board too is extremely valuable. And then this is kind of where we can come in. Uh, so you need to do some training about conducting um, clinical trials. So you might need to just offer your GCP certificate and see if um, it's out of date. Uh, and if so, do a refresher course. Uh, or if you don't have one at all, we have um, online uh, training for um, full GCP training. There's lots of SOPs out there to show you how to do every aspect of um, a clinical trial we can, uh, we can share with you. Um, we I can train you then in GDPR and data protection, which you just cannot avoid. Um, and finally, just do it. Again, we are here to help you kind of with uh, every stage of this process. So first of all, maybe draft a protocol. Get your idea, have done your research, decide that it's a good idea, draft your protocol, and then come to us and we can review it you know, with our, um, you know, my clinical trial hat and um, Stuart's surgical trial hat and you know, give some advice and feedback which will help you down the road when you're submitting it to ethics or you know in terms of like whether it's going to be a successful trial or not and then we can help you you know with drafting your patient information leaflets your consent forms uh, with the ethics submission especially if it's multi-site um, and then we can assist you with opening the study at the sites and then the patients get enrolled and um, data, data is collected and data analysis reporting we can give you some tools as well to help with all of this so this is our email address. Um, just email us as soon as you have your draft protocol. You're probably still saying how, though I don't have the time and I don't have the funding to do this. Again, we're coming in here to help support you there. We, between us, we have, you know, we have a vast amount of experience and we can give you guidance on, you know, what you should and shouldn't do. We have templates. Like, I mean, if you, if you need a protocol template or a patient information leaflet template that's, you know, GDPR compliant, uh, we can give you those. We have access to kind of the clinical research um, infrastructural supports and the training resources, as I was mentioning earlier. Unfortunately, we don't have an endless pot of gold uh, to be able to fund lots of trials, uh, but we can definitely assist with grant applications and identify opportunities uh, to apply for funding. We do have some funding uh, to provide support services, uh, and we have a funding call out at the moment, which I'll mention a bit later on. We also have access to trial management systems and data capture tools, which can be, you know, lead you to run trials more efficiently um, and at a, at a cheaper cost. So what we propose to um, su support you with is in terms of advice, uh, trial design advice, um, advice for protocol development, developing your patient information leaflet, your ethics and regulatory requirements, data analysis, uh, sponsorship and multi-site trials, which we're really trying to promote in order to promote collaboration um, in Ireland. Uh, we can link you with the clinical uh, infrastructure in terms of hospital trial units and the clinical research facilities that are dotted around the country and academic research offices. Uh, as I mentioned before, we can provide training in clinical trial methodology and GCP training or data protection. And we're going to be going out there and uh, seeking trial opportunities in terms of if there's collaborative group opportunities or cooperative um, group opportunities. And, you know, Stephanie and the ISRC have already linked in with a lot of collaborative groups, which can, you know, generate a lot of trials that can be conducted internationally, which is fantastic. And there are also existing international trials that perhaps we could bring to Ireland to, to open up sites here. In terms of funding, again, I said, we're going to help you identify funding opportunities and help with the grant applications and um, offer some supportive grants. We really need to kind of showcase Ireland as a place to do surgical trials. So we have our rudimentary website up and going at the moment. We'll be putting bells and whistles on it soon. Um, and we're establishing our social media. So if there's any surgical trial activity that's going on, publications or meeting presentations and things, we in future would love if you could get in touch and let us know and we can um, do our bit to, to showcase and highlight them. So our future vision is to improve collaboration and coordination of surgical research in Ireland. 
We want more multi-centre randomised control trials and people working together across the island of Ireland. We want to be internationally recognised as an innovative place to do trials and a place where trials get done. We want those multinational um, companies or collaborative groups to see that you know it, it can be done and perhaps they could get involved with um, the trials in Ireland or vice versa. And ultimately, we want to provide every patient access to high quality surgical trials, be those either homegrown or international ones. But we do need to build our reputation to get on the global uh, stage. To realize this vision, we need your help. Um, we want to develop an Irish surgical trials network. And in order to do this, we need to build up a portfolio of trials. So be they investigator-led multi-center RCTs, the cooperative or collaborative group trials, or as Declan was highlighting, the uh, studies within a trial. So to have a portfolio of those trials, we need you to get in touch and um, let us help you get it off the ground. We need to establish a multidisciplinary collaborative network across all specialities, including clinical trial support staff and patients. We've heard earlier that like PPI is super important to, um, uh, to have involved in all aspects of trial design and conduct, um, and also to have the scientists involved. And we need to showcase our research and trial activity internationally in terms of publications, presenting at conferences and meetings, and in terms of collaborating internationally. And there are a number of supports in Ireland, including us now, um, that we can leverage uh, in order to uh, realize this vision. So in Ireland, this is the national clinical trial infrastructure picture uh, at the moment, and it's predominantly funded by the Health Research Board. So it comprises of the clinical research units, the HRV um, CRFs that are dotted around the country, um, and that we uh, can help you, we can introduce you to them if you want to open your studies um, at the different sites. And the National Clinical Trials Office um, is one of their support services, and these are involved in coordinating research across the, um, the clinical research facilities and for identifying opportunities to bring trials to Ireland. We have, of course, the HRV TMRN who have helped host us um, this webinar today, and we're eternally grateful, grateful for that. Um, and I hope it's been a tremendous success. And there's also then the Irish um, Clinical Trial Networks, and these um, are very active in getting trials up and going in Ireland in the various different uh, fields. So we want to become part of this, uh, this bigger picture to have our Irish Surgical Trials Network embedded here in Ireland. So the challenge, as I was saying, is to think of a potential trial, do some research, get some feedback from your colleagues and contact us to get it off the ground. And in order to promote this, we have a funding call out at the moment. And this is open to all surgical specialities. And as Jane highlighted, you know, it's really important to do um, pilot and feasibility studies uh, before you jump into, make that leap into the big um, fishbowl um, and do a pilot or feasibility um, study first. So again, we want to promote collaboration. Um, so if you can submit this as a multi-center trial if possible with a randomized study design, um, having consultant PI and trainees as sub-investigators. At the moment, we uh, want to uh, support non-regulated trials, um, as you know, Tom and Donna were kind of highlighting, you know, keep it simple to start off with um, and kind of bringing in kind of your, your drug trials are, are kind of bringing a layer of, of complexity. Um, so again, we want it to be kind of feasible and manageable. So uh, we want, would like if they could be completed within 12 months with recruitment starting fairly soon in terms of like quarter one and 2023. So I'd urge you to have a look um, in more detail at the application details, which is on our website here. Uh, and do please get in contact with us, even with the, at your idea stage, so we can help um, with you 
um, to submit um, a good application form that we should be able to fund. And if you really want to get involved in clinical trials um, and you know, gain a huge amount of experience, we've also just launched a research fellowship opportunity. Um, and this would basically to be um, working on your own trial together with us uh, in the NSRC. And also uh, you will be gaining experience on all aspects of clinical trials methodology and from the very beginning from protocol development right through to managing the study and um, closing it out and um, reporting. Uh, so we'll also be providing funding to support a master's in clinical research methodology. So, you know, really learn by doing. So if you're interested in doing that, uh, this job is now live on the careers portal, the RCSI careers portal. And with that, I will stop that now. And I hope I can answer any questions there in the